Introduce yourself, man. Tell them who you are and what you got All right, going yeah, on. So, um, Bravado, Bravado by Sam, man. My name is Samuel Glickman. Um, Bravado is Latin for private. Um, and so uh, the name of my business is Bravado Grooming, which is uh, which stands for private grooming. Um, and so I've kind of been in the private grooming space for a while, man. I've been a licensed master barber for 25 years uh, and been in the game now for 30 years. Um, so I'd like to say I kind of been there, done it. Uh, when it comes to, um, you know, organically building a clientele, opening up barbershops, closing barbershops, selling barbershops, owning a chain of barbershops, opening up suites and providing suites for people. And now I'm doing grooming suites. So I, I, I'm in the business of leasing out grooming suites. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much who I am. I'm the founder of the Georgia Barbers Network, which is a. Uh, you know, it's our local network of, uh, of barbers uh, right here in, in, in the GA. Uh, most of us are right here in Atlanta. Uh, very close knit family. Um, we're expanding. We're actually about to launch a publication called the B Culture, uh, which is uh, stands for Barber Culture. Uh, the Georgia Bar Georgia Barbers be pushing that GA Barbers, and uh, of course, I'm the founder of the MBBS uh, conference, man. This, the National Barbers and Beauty Symposium. Right here in Atlanta, which is coming up January twelfth and thirteenth. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited about that, man. Man, you got a lot going on. Oh yeah, you got yeah, a lot sure. going on, especially you've been in the gang for twenty five years. So that's a 30. that's a accomplishment with thirty years. That's an accomplishment in itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate. So, it. Yeah. So what type of uh, what type of advice would you give your younger self? After after being in the game for thirty years, what would you look back and say that you what the type of advice you would give your younger self? Um, slow down a little bit. You know, the younger Sam man was so excited about about uh, expanding and growing, and and uh, uh, you know, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves, man. One of the things that I do now that has been so profitable for me is is just taking my time, being patient. Uh, pacing, you know, uh, deciphering and discerning the right season, you know, being in the right place at the right time, making sure I'm in position. Um, the younger Sam wasn't thinking about none of that. The younger Sam, if something comes across my mind and I think I can do it, I'm just going to do it. And uh, and so uh, uh, I inherited my first barbershop at 18 years old. And um you know, going into shop ownership, especially a shop that I inherited being, you know, that shop was in business for 50 years prior to me taking it over. And uh, me taking over that shop at 18, I didn't know anything about management. I didn't know anything about, about ownership. I didn't know anything about uh, uh, being authoritative uh, in any respect, if that's, if that's a good word to use inside of a shop. Um, just didn't have an idea. And so a lot of trial and error, um, you know, that whole saying, if I can do it all over again, I would do it this way. Uh, I've had that opportunity on a numerous occasions. I'm, I'm, I'm living in that literally as we speak. Uh, if I can do it all over again, I would do it this way. I'm doing it that way now. Um, for the first time in my life, uh, after being in business for 25 years, I, I can honestly say right now what I'm doing is the right way. So you, you, finally, know, so uh, you, finally, got the, you finally got the hang oh, yeah. of it, basically. Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Who, so who'd no you doubt, in, no who, doubt. who'd you inherit the barbershop from? Was it in the family um, or was so, it? A... So so originally I'm from Los Angeles, from an uh, area called Pasadena, and uh, the the barbers that pretty much raised me up there um, turned me on to these two barbers in Lubbock, Texas, um, where my mom ended up moving from Pasadena, California, to Lubbock, Texas. And these guys just so happened to know some barbers there, so they turned me on to them. Two guys by the name of H.C. and D.C. Uh, D.C. The dude's name was actually District Columbia. Uh, was a, that was his actual name, and his brother's name was H.C., which was Horace Chester. And uh, two legendary barbers, man, had been in the game for years. Um, they gave me the keys, celebrating 50 years in the business. Told me to pay the power bill, and uh, they just <laughs> felt like. Uh, you know, I was uh, I was ordained to do it, I guess. And uh, yeah, so two gentlemen that I that I had the privilege of knowing about a year before the, before I inherited the shop. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so tell us a little bit about the organization that you said you're the founder of. What was it again? Georgia Barbers Network. Georgia Barbers Network. And then what was yeah. the, the other one that you, that's, you're doing the event. Is that the Georgia's Barbers? Uh, M- M- MBBS. Yeah. So M- National Barbers. Yeah. So let's, let's, uh, Let's uh let's talk about MBBS. So MBBS is January twelfth and thirteenth. National Barbers and Beauty Symposium. It's an educational based uh conference that's uh that's, that's uh you know known for educators being able to come and teach independently away from their brands. So a lot of shows, man, the educators that they provide are brand specific educators that are there to educate uh <coughs> with the sense of of hopefully attracting people back to their booths and uh and pushing products and pushing sales um and so they become influential for that purpose alone uh at my show um it's it's a little different because educators are there independently uh on their own away from the brand so they have the freedom of, of really teaching of really educating and doing them uh venting expressing inspiring motivating all of the above uh, and so it's just a different flow, man, because educators are able to operate away from their brands uh, uh, the way they wish they could do uh, while they're with the brand. However, even in the sense of educators being able to go and participate in other classes and things of that nature, it's just uh, it's just a unique uh, approach to the industry, uh, offering more of an intimate style uh, of education uh, versus you know, 800 people being in a room and, and 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 the host of the show being excited about 800 people being in one room, right. one class, you know? Right. So the uh, event is, is strictly is strictly education, no barber battles, no... Uh... Um, so, so the event is strictly education. However, however, uh, Barber Olympia, um, I'm sorry, Barber Olympic is, uh, Barber Olympics is, um, is hosting their barber battle, uh, uh, at our show this year. So they're hosting their Barber Battle featured at MBBS, uh, 2020, Barber Olympic. That's hosted by Yousef Barber. Um, and so although I'm not responsible for that event, it's not my event per se. However, he's utilizing, um, our stage and our platform to host that event, man. So I'm excited about that. So it is a Barber Battle this year. Uh, oh, okay. Barber Olympic, uh, hosted by Yousef. Yeah. Is this the first? Yeah. Is this the first event with NBBS? This is the third, this is the, this is the third year. Oh, okay. This is the third year. Right here in Atlanta, man. Right there at the uh, Cobb Galleria. Um, we have an exhibit hall and four breakout rooms. Um, so, yeah, we have four. Usually four classes are going on at one time. And you can shift from class to class uh, if you want. Or, you know, you have your option to go uh, to one of the four classes and sit there for an hour, you know, and, and learn. Uh, but every hour on the hour on Sunday, uh, you'll be able to sit in a different class. And then on Monday, it's, it's lights, cameras, action. You know, uh, oh. all the education that takes place in the exhibit hall on the big stage, the big LED wall behind you, and lights and the cameras and all that stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Um, yeah. Yep, that's uh that's pretty much the gist of it, man. MBBS is um, we're bringing educators from London, Russia, Amsterdam, uh, Manchester, uh, <clears throat> um, and uh, Dominican Republic, man. So we're bringing educators uh, from out of the country this year as well. So it's an it's um, an international yeah. event. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So we're bringing we're bringing educators from all over the country and out of the country. Uh, and it's really just about exposing our market um, to higher education, to, you know, it's, it's, it's advanced learning. That's what it is uh, for some of us professionals that have gone through the process of uh, going to school, getting licensed and being in the game for a while. This is more than just continued education. It's, it's advanced learning. So this is this is what we do uh, at the top of the year to uh, make all the proper adjustments and, and, and advance ourselves in, in our careers. You know. Okay. So one more time before we go to a little a little break. Tell the people exactly where the event is at and uh what's going on. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so January twelfth and the thirteenth, uh 
MBBS. You can go online to the MBBS.com, the MBBS.com. Uh, check that out January 12th and 13th at the Cobb Galleria right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's a two day event. The cost of it is only $30. Um, if you want a promo code right now, uh, I would I would give you a promo code uh, by the way of G A Barbers one word all caps G A Barbers that'll give you an additional ten percent off. Um, so take advantage of that thirty hours worth of education at the cost of a dollar per course. So for thirty dollars, you can't beat that over the course of two days uh, for higher education for, for educators from all over the world um, that are, are, are uh, participating this year in this event. So. You can't beat it, man. MBBS 2020. Yep. The MBBS.com. What type of turnout do you get at the events? Um, last year we had a little over 500. This year, um, our tickets are selling like crazy. So, uh, uh I think we're probably going to bust, bust the roof open this time. Uh, we'll probably have a little over a thousand people this year, uh, for sure. Um, which is which is going to be unique for us because again it's it's always been a little bit more intimate. Um, this year our exhibit hall is 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 uh, technically completely full, uh, with the exception of ten ten booths left. But we've had so many vendor requests um, over the course of the next two days. I'm just going to vet through them and, and pick the best ten vendors. So we'll have a completely full exhibit hall. That's what's up. Excuse me, this year for the first time. Um, which I'm excited about that for sure. Yeah, 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 that's a good look. I'm definitely gonna. Uh, I ain't gonna be able to catch this one this year, but next year I'm definitely gonna make sure we in yeah. attendance. Yeah, we for sure, team. for sure, for sure, man. It's it's, it's not an event you want to miss, especially if you're uh, if you if you're into advanced learning. Everybody, you know, education is not popular, man. so if you're into higher education and and uh, and you want to be exposed to some. So, some major brands, uh, for instance, we have Bevel uh, is starting their professional line of products. Uh, they're sponsoring our event this year. They're gonna they're gonna introduce uh, their products to everybody. Um, we also have uh, a company by the name of Rizzle. It's a huge brand uh, now in the grooming world. Uh, they'll be there this year as well. Um, we have Squire is gonna be there. Hattori Hanzo is gonna be there. Uh, JRL is going to be there. Um, a lot of brands. Uncle Jimmy, um, AVH, uh, L'Oreal, Pravana, um, you name it. They're, they're going to pretty much, uh, be in the building this year, man. So it's, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. That's what's um, up. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. All right. So and, you know, that's why I'm out here getting this word out, man. Oh, uh, man. Because, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad we can help. Yeah, yeah, because you know, at, at at any point, you know, for thirty dollars, thirty hours worth of education, you you can't beat that. You can't beat that, man. You That's know, cool. um, yeah, you can't beat that. Vava, I see you on there, girl. I see you just jumped on here. Bravado. Yeah. That's how you see it. Yeah, what's up, Bravado man? Bravado by Sam. Right. Yep. What's good, man? It's That's the barber it. son over here, man. I just had a couple questions for you too, as well. Oh, okay. Let me just start by saying it's good. To, it's good to meet you. I can, you know? It's I can good barely, to see. You. I can't see your face though. I'm over here, but I'm in the mic. Yeah, so he can. He can see you. I can see you. Yeah, he just looking uh Here, turn somewhere because right, I can cool. see it on here. You can't even cool. really see it. Awesome. Okay. All right. You say you've been in the game for uh, thirty years, right? Oh, you can't see. Thirty years. Man. Thirty Life years. Twenty five. That's what's up, man. Congratulations on that, by the way. So. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 43, man. 43. 43 years old. I got licensed in 1994. Oh, man, I'm 31, yeah. so you've been in and doing this since almost before <laughs> I was born. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I want to just ask you a couple questions. I was going to ask you a couple questions. Uh, how important do you think consistency is in this barber industry? Um. Well, consistency is everything in every industry, uh, to be honest with you. When you're talking entrepreneurship, uh, the only way you're going to attack anything that you can envision is by being way is by being consistent. Um, for me, uh, that's that's been my biggest asset, believe it or not. Um, I've made a living off being available and a consistent, uh, putting myself in position to reap clients and, and being consistent with that position. 
has, has really been the key to my success, to be honest with you. Um, that's, uh, that's for anything, you know, it, it, not just the barber world. If you open up a business and, and, and your hours open from, from eight to six, uh, people are going to become familiar with that time frame, and, and that consistency is going to open up the door for you to reap clients. You know, um, I have built a clientele off of being available at six o'clock in the morning. And so people are familiar with me being available. So they book appointments as early as six in the morning. I got clients that I've been doing literally for the last 20 years, same time, same day, uh, starting at six o'clock in the morning on Fridays and Saturdays. And, uh, and so, yeah, consistency has been the key to my success for sure. For sure. Yeah. So you're a pretty successful barber. I can tell. I mean, you got big things going on. I mean, this event already by itself sound like it's real, real big. You talking about about a thousand people coming. That's like, that's like, a, that's a milestone, man. A lot of people can't do stuff like that for shows. You know what I mean? Especially yeah, an educational show. So, you know, obviously you got to be pretty successful in that. So with your success, um, what barber or barbers would you say that influenced you to move the way you move and how you've grown yourself um, in the barber world? Um, so the barbers that influenced me are not on Instagram. Uh, they have no idea what social media is all about. Um, two of them are dead. Mm. One of them is still living. Um, actually, two of them are still living. So uh, two gentlemen, well, I'll say three of them are still living. Uh, two gentlemen by the name of, of uh, Luke Walker and Chuck Walker out of Pasadena, California. Uh, legendary barbers, man. Chuck Walker was the very first barber to open up a unisex salon in America, right there in LA. It was called Just In Time. Uh, this was back in 1987. Back in 1987. We had never heard of the term open one up. Uh, uh, back in, uh, in, uh, 1987, man. And it could have been 1986. It was one of those years. Uh, but Chuck Walker and his brother Luke Walker, uh, which is older than him, who's still living and still cutting hair, he's probably in his early 80s now. Um, those were the two gentlemen that that pretty much inspired me uh, to do what I do. Uh, you know, for some kids in the neighborhood, uh, they get influenced by different things. Some people get influenced by dope dealers. Some people get influenced by pimps. You know, where I'm from, uh, my neighborhood, I was influenced by dress slacks, a white smock, and dress shoes and cash money, you know? And so the barber was my influence and uh, Luke Walker was one of those dudes that just, uh, that just, uh, you know, I, I, I just gravitated to him at a young age. I was about 10 years old. I remember uh, watching him pull his, his, uh, his change out of his pocket to give, to give a customer back change, right? And the way he would pop the rubber band off of his wad and 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 flip that money out. Uh, I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world, man. And, and so, at, at, as as a ten years ten year old man, I was like, I, I need to hold a wad of cash like that when I get older. And so that's why I say for some people, man, you know, and where I'm from, you know, in the hood, you know, there are different things that people get inspired by, man. Barber, uh, barber, and that that white smock, dress slacks, dress shoes, and cash money. That was my inspiration. Uh, I knew at 10 years old I was going to be a barber, man. You know, so that was that was my thing. Uh, uh, I couldn't wait to hold the water money, pop the rubber band off, and hand my client back some cash. That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope, man. Yeah, man. I know yeah. my biggest influence uh, is this dude over here. DL. Uh, are you familiar with DL Master Barber? Nuh-uh. DL's a big deal in our industry, man. Um He's still doing hair now. If, if, if you don't know him, follow him when we get off of this live. But DL Master Barber is uh, one of my homeboys. He was the one, uh, when I was in the eighth grade, uh, he had just finished school. And he had his own barbershop, man, at 18 years old. And uh, he was the one that made it a reality for me early, uh, for me to inspire to have my own barbershop at 18. And so uh, I had already envisioned in my mind I was going to be a shop owner by way of what DL did. 
And uh, now DL is one of the biggest influences in our industry right now, which is a, which is a big deal, man. But yeah, DL Master Barber is another one that influenced me uh, big time. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's dope. So <clears throat> with that being said, you know, all barbers, they all specialize in something. What would you say that you specialize in and what makes you stick out up more than other barbers? Um, I can't honestly say I know what makes me stick out. Um, and right now I don't really specialize in any one particular thing, but I will say this. Um, for barbers that are trying to build themselves, um, people are trying to find ways to invest into you, right? Um, when people are looking for a barber, uh, they're not just looking for someone who's skilled. They, they, they want to know the personality. They want to know if he's going to be about his business. They want to know if he's going to be on time. He's going to be consistent, all the above, man. And so I would say I've done a very good job of painting a picture on Instagram of what kind of person I am, giving people a realistic idea of what they're about to patronize. And I think that separates me from a lot of barbers in my area, um, presenting myself in a specific manner uh, so people have a realistic idea, man, of what they're about to invest their money into. Yeah, MBBS, MBBS, and I posted down here on the comment too, man. Uh, MBBS 2020 is January 12th and 13th uh, at the Cobb Galleria right here in Atlanta. You know, uh, it's uh, it's a two day event. The cost of this event is only thirty dollars. Uh, so we're offering basically thirty hours of education at the cost of a dollar per course. Man, you can't beat that. Uh, and uh, so I'm posting it right here. You guys can pin it um, if you if you want. Let's see here. Host, hold on. Um, TheMBBS.com is uh, is the website. You can go on there and purchase tickets right there from the site, the nbbs.com. Oh yeah, man. You know, you know how these young dudes is that cut hair, man. Like I, I be in the shop. I got a couple young people that work around me. I be in the shop. Okay. And uh I got a few dudes that look up to me, you know what I mean? And I try to tell them things, yeah. but I feel like sometimes a lot of people won't understand unless they hear it from multiple people or people that's you know, done more or been in the industry longer. So uh how do you feel how important communication is with a barber or any kind of a stylist or, you know, anybody that deal with clients and um, um, how, how important you feel communication is be between them. Um, well, communication is everything, you know, uh, uh, being able to effectively communicate though, I think comes by way of, of study and behavior. So, um, you know, it's one thing to study consumer behavior, but uh, to study the behavior of independent contractors and working with 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 individuals that are that are licensed and in business for themselves is is a unique situation. And I think what our industry is probably one of the most unique when it comes down to dealing with independent contractors. Uh, you know, if, if if there was ever a term that I would use for you to kind of study on, it would be called emotional intelligence uh in the hospitality world is called ei so if you can study ei which, which is emotional intelligence man to kind of give you an idea uh of how to discern different situations man that 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 will help you in the area of conflict resolution it'll help you in the area of, of, of client retention it'll help you in the area of, of customer service um from a management standpoint and, and being an influential figure, man, it's one thing to be able to to tell somebody something, right? It's another for them to actually believe you. Um, and so going out of your way to be influential at all times, man, so that everything that comes out of your mouth and everything that you do, from the clothes you put on to the to the way you wear your hair to the uh, to the words that come out of your mouth is something that they want to inspire to be, you know. And I think we don't work hard enough at at, at being that super influential person. We're hoping that we influence people. We're hoping that we're influential, but we don't really put in the time to be extremely influential, if that makes any sense. It you makes know, perfect you sense. You gotta be intentional with all your moves. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm back. Yeah, that's my son, man. 
he been cutting. He been in the game for a while. He was in the shop with me uh, since he was like 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, yeah, so I, I had a shop. And now he's grinding. Yeah, now he grinding. I was, you know, I was cutting for about 20 years myself. I kind of cut it off in, uh, in 2016. I closed my shop and I just decided to have, uh, you know, just go another direction, different business endeavors. Nice. Yeah, so that's nice. what we, so that's how we came up with the with the cutting line brand. So man, nice. you you've been in the game for like thirty years. So my question is, where do you see yourself ten years from now? Are you still going to be cutting, or are you going to just yeah. strictly teaching or sticking to um, the, the sweets? Or, or where you see yourself at ten years from now? Yeah, so there are specific clients that I can kind of envision myself always cutting. Um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to do, you know, uh, I'm not going to name drop, but there are particular individuals that I feel like I'm going to always cut as long as I'm healthy enough to cut them. Uh, whether I'm going to be cutting behind the chair for a living, now that's, I think, is probably uh, a bigger question. Um, I don't think that I'll be cutting behind the chair for a living in, in, in the next 10 years. I'm working hard right now to uh, to build a platform of, of, of you know, uh, uh, additional revenue streams, man, to keep me from having to make a living from behind the chair. Uh, but it's all industry related. I don't think I'll ever get away from this industry. Uh, I love doing hair. You know, I love everything about this industry. Um, I'm a contributor to the industry uh, outside of cutting hair. I'm, I'm an influencer in this industry. So uh, I think I'll always have something to do with it to the day I die. Um, I think about Vidal Sassoon and uh, people like um, Van Council, who started, who founded Van Michael Salons, man. You know, Van Council's a 65 years old master educator, but he's still doing hair. Um, you know, this guy gets paid $200 a haircut, though. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> so it's a different ball game, but you know, there are people like that that I'm looking up to right now. Um, they kind of give me hope, uh, you know, in my 50s, uh, in my 60s, and kind of give me an idea of what I'm going to look like uh, or what I have to look forward to uh, in my 50s and 60s, 60s. You know, at a time where, you know, we have so many young folks that are kind of taking over the industry, uh, how can you still be influential to them? Uh, as you're getting older. And those are the things I think about, man, you know, starting with health. I mean, I got to do a better job of, uh, of making sure my health is intact, you know, uh, with the way I look, man, making sure I'm presentable at all times, man. I don't want to look like an old dude that's not relevant. <laughs> right. You know, I want to make sure I'm relevant at all times. You right. Know? Definitely. Uh, so e even at 43, man, I I'm, I'm just as cool as, as a 20 year old or a 21 year old or Definitely. whatever. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm always keep my cool points, and, and the older I get, I, I think I'm only gonna become even cooler. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Right now, you know, my goal is just to sustain relevancy uh, on all cylinders, and to make sure that everything I'm involved with myself in right now is working. You know, um, what you don't want to do, man, is put your hands on so many different things, man, that you half-ass a lot. Right. Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that everything that I'm doing is working, um, and so. I'm very intentional about it. Uh, starting with my social media. Social media is uh, has really been 80% of my success, to be honest with you. Um, I, I've just been fortunate enough to work social media to my benefit, you know. And so uh, uh, I would say that's probably one of my biggest assets. I, I'm going to utilize it even more. I don't know if Instagram will be around for the next 10 years, um, but I'm already working on other platforms like TikTok. And, uh, and and a couple of others that I think I think TikTok is going to be the next big thing, to be honest with you. Uh, and so I'm starting to build some relevancy there uh, on TikTok. Man, we got to make adjustments. You know, we got to constantly adjust. Uh, we got to constantly uh, uh, put ourselves in a position where we're relevant with everything that's going on around us uh, concerning our industry. You know, and, and that's how we're going to stay ahead of the game. You right. know, that's what my conference is about, really uh, putting you in a position to make all the right adjustments, you know. Definitely. Yeah. So, so what would you say after being in the game so long and all the accomplishments that you achieve, what would you say has been your most impactful uh, contribution to the industry? Uh, my most impactful contribution to the industry. Um, 
I would say the Georgia Barbers Network, man, uh, actually creating a, 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 an organization that allowed all of all of us here in Atlanta uh, that are that are of some type of influence, and even those that aren't, um, to you know have a platform for us to kind of gleam off of each other, to utilize each other's resources, to build up each other, encourage each other. Um, I think starting the the Georgia Barbers Network has been my biggest contribution to this industry because locally it's made a difference uh, uh, with a lot of us, man. The, the, Atlanta's a very unique place, man, when it comes to the barber industry. And a lot of us know each other. We're like, we're like one big family. Um, and I think the Georgia Barbers Network had everything to do with, with really kind of building that, that camaraderie. Uh, together, man. So GA Barbers has probably been my biggest uh, contribution. Outside of that, you know, I'm contributing all the time. I'm, I'm, I'm a big seed sower. Uh, I believe in sowing seed. I believe that that seed is the ultimate uh, the ultimate key for success. Believe it or not, um, uh, those that are afraid to sow seed, man, they they have a tendency to plateau real early in life. Uh, for me, I think seed just keeps opening up new doors for me all the time. And it's like the more I sow, the more it comes my way. The more doors open up, the more things happen to me, man. And and you know, it's one thing about being a giver is is, is people that give, they always have something to give, you know. Wow. Uh, and so I, I I just I always have something to sow, man. And I've never been afraid to sow because I just I always see the benefits of. It. Uh, so from a contribution standpoint, man, I know what it feels like to get on the road and drive three hours to go and speak at a school uh, for nothing, not get paid, put your own self up in a hotel room, pay for your own airplane ticket to travel across the country and teach somebody or do a one-on-one -on -one or, you know, uh, consult people on all kinds of levels for free. Um, those are seeds sown for me. Uh, so I would say that's, that's, that's probably been my biggest assets, man. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're going to give a, we're going to plug the event again. So go ahead and let everybody know where that event is at and where they can yeah, buy no tickets. Doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For $30, you get 30 hours worth of education at MBBS uh, 2020, man, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, if you go online right now to the MBBS.com, uh, you can purchase your tickets right there from the website. And uh, it's a really user friendly uh, uh, uh method of uh of, of of paying for tickets and, and getting into this event for thirty dollars you can't beat it at the cost of a dollar per course. Uh that's uh I mean you think about what we pay for for just C E classes, you know, you're getting thirty hours worth of education literally for thirty dollars over the course of two days from educators from all over the country and even out of the country, man. So there it is. I just uh I just posted that info right there at the, the bottom right there in the comments. Um, MBBS 2020, January 12th and 13th, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. The website is thenbbs.com. The so I heard you mention earlier that, that you ain't want to do no name dropping. So I don't know. Maybe I'm, I could be assuming to jump into conclusions. I think you cutting some celebrities over there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do quite a few celebrities, man, and uh, and even outside of celebrities, man, some super high profile clients, man. Um, so I give you something that I've done early, and one of my confirmations, uh, one of the confirmations uh, of me moving to Atlanta uh, was Dale Bronner, um, which is one of the Bronner brothers, mm -hmm. uh, one of the sons of the Bronner brothers, uh, who's a big time pastor now still involved with the Bronner brother brand, but uh, Dale Bronner was a big sign. Uh, by way of doing Dale Bronner, man, he hooked me up with uh, Bishop Eddie Long. So I started doing Bishop Eddie Long's hair. And then from Bishop Eddie Long, I started doing Byron Cage. And then I ended up doing Kirk Franklin. I did mm. Kirk Franklin's hair for 10 years. And from Kirk Franklin, I started doing Chris Tucker. And then from Chris Tucker and Nas. And then from Nas, uh, it just went down the line. So right now, um, uh, the people I do right now, I'm not gonna mention their names, uh, just because it's just not it's, it's not relevant, man. But I've been super fortunate, man, to do so many people over the course of the last 25 years 
Um, it's been unreal, man. So we were talking earlier about positioning, uh, being in the right position, man. That's that's really been the claim to my fame. Uh, I just always have a tendency to be in the right spot at the right time with the right attitude, with the right personality, you know, to make the right kind of money with the right kind of client. <laughs> <laughs> so you doing you doing everything right. Hey, man, you know, it's called fortune. You know, I, I've been fortunate, man. Game, what's up, game? I see you on here. All right, I'm finna pass it to the barber, son. I got. All right, man, how you I doing, got bro? 10%. Okay, we almost done. 10% battery life on here, man. Okay. I we probably are. just got one more question for you, man. We're going to let you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No so, doubt. you know, you've been in the game, like we already said, it's been 30 years, 25 licensed. What's the difference have you seen from when you first started cutting hair to what it's like now? Like, what's the what's the major difference you've seen? Uh, the approach to establishing a clientele. That's the biggest approach, man. Uh you know, back when I first started, the business card went a long, a long ways. Uh, a flyer went a long ways. Uh, now, um, you know, knocking on someone's door is actually slipping in somebody's DM. You know, <laughs> that's our new way of knocking on the door. Uh, my new way of handing somebody a business card is literally slipping in the DM. Um, even though I manage 80 bookings a week, I'm still sliding in the DMs. I'm still presenting myself to different professionals. Uh, targeting is a big is a big difference now. Uh, back in the day, uh, I remember standing in front of a, a Kmart and handing out business cards and flyers and trying to build a business that way. And people weren't really concerned about whether you can cut hair or not. Now we live in a world of imagery, and so because people have access to images, you know, the minute you hand them a business card, the first thing they're going to ask you is, "Do you have an Instagram?" Uh, they want to see your work. You know, they don't just want to see your work. They want to see what kind of person you are. They want to be able to decipher if you're responsible, if you're on top of your game. You know, is this person getting high all the time? Like I said before, they want to know who they're about to invest their money into. Now. You know, because there's a barber on every corner, right? And so because there's a barber in every corner, man, you got to be extremely intentional, man, about how you're posting and moving uh, on social media, man. And, and so to me, that's been the biggest change, uh, making that adjustment. You know, uh, I haven't made business cards in a while. You know, I, 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 I'm 80% of my clients are coming by way of social media because I'm targeting and I'm still <laughs> sliding in the DMs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's what's yeah. up, man. I ain't going to lie, man. Talking to you right now, man, you done gave me some game, bro. I feel like I'm about to go and take some of this and uh, step my game that much more. <laughs> Good, man. Real that's talk. what it's about, bro. You one of the OGs in the about. game, man. One of the OGs in there, man. Appreciate you. No doubt, man. I appreciate y'all, man. MBBS 2020, man. January 12th and 13th. Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, man, Sam, appreciate you for tapping in with us, man. We doing no we doubt, go, we doing this no on doubt. a on a regular basis. We shoot we actually okay. shoot a podcast on Sunday. And then after we shoot okay. the podcast, we going live. So we so you okay. probably, you know, Look for us. We gonna tap in with the other barbers. We trying to make sure, you know, we reach out, help the barbers promote. We trying to do whatever we can so that we can be impactful, you know what I mean, on this industry. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, through social no media. Doubt. Yeah, so man, we definitely no appreciate you tapping in. Man, continue much success. And uh, no doubt, man. we'll see you next year, bro. <laughs> All right, man. We go. I appreciate that, man. MBBS 2020, January 12th and 13th, man. Atlanta, Georgia, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, you, bro. All right. Hey, man, I enjoyed it, man. I'm going uh, take my butt to sleep now. <laughs> All right, man. Appreciate you. All right, man. All right, Much peace. Love. love. That concludes with the, the uh, interview. That was definitely dope. Oh, yeah. You still on that? Yeah. It's off, though.